For 6b, now we have a square root one. So again, we have to make sure we start with the same base graph here. Now for this one, uh, I have a little bit different order of how it's uh, shown here. For the transformations to work, the x value has to come first. In this case, it's not. So the first thing we want to do with this is we actually want to rewrite this problem. We're going to uh, rewrite the one in the x. So I'm going to flip the order around and I'm going to write it like this. But it's still not good enough because for transformations to work, again, the x has to be by itself with nothing in front of it. So we're going to uh, do one more step. We're going to factor out a negative here. And you get negative there, x minus 1. So we take a negative out. That's basically going to switch these two signs. And the one on the outside, that's still going to be a negative 2. So the reason why we did that first is because now we see the x comes first, but notice now that we have a negative 1. So this time we're going to be moving it to the right. So when we, start, when we do our base graphs here, we're first going to start with the correct library function. So for this one, we got to use a square root of x uh, as, a, as a base. Now that one looks like this. That's the kind of shape that it does. It's going to go through 1, 1, and it also goes through 4, 2. And then this information basically comes from our uh, base graph. It also goes through 0, 0. So the first thing that we're going to do here is we're going to move the graph one place over to the right. So we're going to do the square root of x minus 1, just that part on the inside. Again, you always move it opposite direction of the sign that you see right there. So instead of negative, you're going to move it one to the right. So now my graph is going to start here. Instead, it's going to start at 1, 0 instead of 0, 0. And so I'm going to have the graph that's going to now go uh, that direction. So this is going to be uh, all these points here, they get shifted one to the right. So we're moving the whole thing over one to the right, which means that at 1, 1, it's going to move over. So now it's going to be at 2, 1. So this point now is going to be at 2, comma 1. Now you don't have to label your points in the test itself because you're going to have grid paper provided for you. So you can actually just draw it going through the correct points. So I'm labeling them here for, for your use. But again, uh, on the test itself, you don't have to uh, do that. Okay, now in this case, it would be at 5, 2 because the other one was at 4, 2, but we're adding, we're moving it one place to the right, and that would make that 5. So now we're at, we're at that point. The next thing that we're going to do is we're going to apply the negative on the inside. And so let me move over these grids here because they're kind of running out of space here. So let me go ahead and, and draw the other one over here. Now, we have to... The, ne with the negative on the inside, what that does is that flips the graph this direction in the vertical direction. However, the graph is not going to end up over here at this point. What you want to do is imagine that the graph is attached to the board like this and I'm taking it and swinging it over. So this point right here is like a pivot point. So the graph is still going to cross through that point right there uh, at the uh, positive 1. But the whole thing flips over this way. So now the, the graph is going to open up to the left. So it was at 2 comma 1. What will happen is that point's going to get reflected over to this point here. So it's now going to go through this point. It's going to go through 0 1. Likewise the 5 2 that gets reflected over as well. Now the way the base graph works is you go 1 to the right and up 1 and you go 4 to the right and up 2. We can do the same process for this. Uh, you can go, instead of going 1 to the right and up 1, we went 1 to the left and up 1. You can think about it that way. And also you can think about going, we're going to go 4 places to the left and then up 2. So that means that our other point would end up here at that point. So this would be at uh, negative 3, 2, and this would be at 0, 1. So all I did was I just flipped everything around. So I basically just took the whole thing and moved it that way. And the, and the reason why we do that 
is because of the negative that's inside. If the negative is on the outside, it's a flip down this way. But we have a negative on the inside. So negative on the inside is going to be a flip over the vertical axis and we end up getting this one. Okay. Now the very last one that we're going to do is we're going to take this graph and we're going to shift it down uh, two units. So the very last one, uh, let me put it over here. This would be your very last grid that we would have. And by the way, the uh, the equation that we used for this one was negative x minus 1. So what I did was I applied the negative here from the inside. The very last one I'll do now is going to be square root x minus 1 and I'm going to have minus 2. So now that's going to shift this whole thing down uh, two units. So that means all these points that you see here, every one drops down by 2. So this point at negative 3, 2 is now going to be at negative 3, 0. So we'll show that one here, negative 3, 0, we have a point right there. At 0, 1, we're going to move that down two places. So now that's going to cross at 0, negative 1. So 0, negative 1 would be here. The very last one, we had a point here at 1, 0. That gets shifted down 2. So that's going to be at 1, negative 2. So 1 and negative 2. So now the whole graph looks like this. This would be what your final answer would be. So this is the second graph, the third graph, and this would be the fourth graph. It would end up looking like that. And the graph would actually cross, uh, cross the x-axis at negative 3. So that would be uh, your completed graphs for this particular problem.